So we're going to go ahead and start our final section of the year. Congratulations, you made it. And our last section of the year is going to be dealing with a little bit more of these trig identities uh, that we've been working with so far from the last section. But we're going to go ahead and use these identities to kind of verify or in this case prove um, some trig statements meaning how if you take a look at the top of the page, how this expression on the left is equal to this expression on the right. So we might have to use some of those identities or shortcuts with trig functions um, from the last section in order to help us to prove some trigonometric equations or expressions that are equal to each other. So for instance, let's go ahead and see if this trig statement is true at the value of pi over 6. So if we were at that spot on the unit circle, would this expression be the exact same as this expression? So let's go ahead and check that out. Algebraically, we'll go ahead and plug in pi over 6 for our value of theta. We're going to check out each one individually. So maybe I'll work with the left side over here and then I'll come back to the right side over here. All right, now secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So really secant, we can rewrite this as 1 over cosine of pi over 6. Now, I know the unit circle is pretty new to us. We haven't really seen it before um, this class. So if you have to reference the unit circle, that's fine. But if you plan to go on to um, AP Calc next year, we will have to know some of these trig values by heart or by hand off of that unit circle. Specifically, anything within that first quadrant is uh, a necessity. So cosine of pi over 6 in the first quadrant is the square root of 3 over 2. So this fraction can be 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, and then we're going to subtract it by cosine of pi over 6, which we just said was the square root of 3 over 2. So from here, it's going to be some algebra and fraction work to help us simplify it down to something that we can recognize. Remember, our goal in the end is to check or to see whether these two sides are equal. Okay, are they exactly the same? So on the left-hand side, instead of dividing by a fraction, what I could do is multiply by the reciprocal. So in other words, bring this up and multiply 1 by the reciprocal, which would be 2 over the square root of 3. So 1 times anything is just going to be itself. So we're going to be left with 2 over the square root of 3. And we're subtracting a square root of 3 over 2. So again, thinking about fraction work, um, how can we subtract two fractions together? Well, we kind of have to get that common denominator. So I'm going to take this denominator of 2 and multiply that on top and bottom of the first fraction. And then I'll take this denominator of the square root of 3 and multiply that on top and bottom by the other fraction. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. Um, 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 times the square root of 3 will be 2 square root of 3. And then for this other part, square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would just be 3. And we're left with that common denominator of 2 square root of 3. So now that the denominators are common, we can go ahead and subtract the tops. Looks like this is just going to be a 1. All right, so we'll leave it like that. I know that's pretty simple. You could rationalize it, get rid of that square root and the denominator, but we're overall, we're, again, we're just trying to check out to see that these two things are equal. So you might not have to go further if you don't want to. So we know the left-hand side is 1 over 2 square roots of 3. Let's go ahead and see if we get the same thing for the right-hand side. So on the unit circle, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, and we're going to multiply that by tangent of pi over 6. Now tangent is sine over cosine. So we have to take the sine value at this radian, which we just said was 1 half, and we have to divide that by the cosine value at this radian, which we said from doing our work previously was the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so from here, fraction work again. We're going to have to simplify it as far as we can go. Maybe we'll go ahead and take a look at this kind of complex fraction here. Instead of dividing by a fraction, 
we can bring up the denominator and multiply by the reciprocal. So one times two would be two, and then two times the square root of three will be on the bottom. All right, so the tangent of pi over six uh, simplifies to two over two square root of three. Notice how we could cancel out a set of twos um, because we have one up top, one on the bottom, and everything's being multiplied together. So from here, uh, we'll have a remainder placeholder of one. One times one is one for the numerator, and then two times the square root of three will be left on the bottom. All right, so notice how we have the same result from the left and the right. They are equal, so we just showed, okay, algebraically, we're showing our work, we're, we're proving our statement or our conclusion um, that this left-hand side and this right-hand side are exactly the same. So these are some strategies that we're going to use as we go throughout some of these examples. Not all of them are going to be dealing with numbers, though. Okay, we're just going to leave items in terms of the expressions or the trig values, but that was just a number example to kind of get us um, in the, the game of this. So what we just did is we proved that the left and the right side were equal at one particular angle on the unit circle, but that's not necessarily enough to say that they're always going to be exactly the same. So yes, they're the same at that angle, but what about any other angle? We gotta somehow prove that they're the same for all values of theta. So it really doesn't matter what angle you pick, we wanna show that regardless of what you pick, they're gonna be the same exact value every single time. So this is where we're gonna to have to work um, generally or generically, instead of plugging in an angle to test it, we're going to leave these expressions in terms of trig. That way it doesn't matter what we plug in. Okay, it'll work every single time. So uh, again, some strategies we're going to think about is maybe you just want to work on the left hand side to see if you can get it to be the right hand side. Maybe you just want to work on the right hand side to see if it matches the left hand side. If neither one of those work, maybe you want to work a little bit on both sides to see if they're exactly the same. So these are kind of going to be trial and error type of examples or types of questions where you just have to keep working at it, keep playing with it, keep manipulating it um, until you eventually show that they are the same or in fact they are not the same. Sometimes that can happen. So if we read the directions, it says analytically show that the equations below represent trigonometric identity statements. So they're basically saying to us that these are true. Okay, the left-hand side will always equal the right-hand side, but we want to prove it. Okay, we want to show why it's true. Okay, so we're gonna prove it using some algebra. So let's think about this. If we think about secant, we know we can rewrite that as one over cosine. Remember, this was one of our strategies before, how um, try to get everything in terms of sine, cosine, because uh, we can work with those a little bit easier than other um, trig expressions. So we'll go ahead and subtract cosine. Um, let's see. So. Maybe you just want to rewrite the left-hand side and see that it equals the right-hand side. Maybe you want to keep going. Maybe you want to rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. Okay, we could do that. We could see where that kind of leads us. Okay, so let's go ahead and see um, what we can do here. If we look at the left-hand side, notice how we're subtracting two things together but one of them is a fraction. So it really, if we're gonna subtract them, we have to make them both fractions. Maybe think about putting the cosine over one. So in order to get a common denominator, we're gonna go ahead and multiply this second fraction by cosine on top and bottom. So we'll have one over cosine minus, now on the right-hand side, if we have a cosine times another cosine, that's going to be cosine squared, and one times cosine on the bottom will just be cosine. All right, now on the right-hand side, we have sine over one times sine over cosine. 
So this would be sine squared over cosine. All right, we're getting somewhere. So at least we have sines and cosines, no longer that secant and tangent. Let's keep going. So on the left-hand side, now that we have that common denominator, we can go ahead and subtract the tops and we'll keep the common denominator. The right-hand side is already a singular fraction, so maybe you don't wanna go any further with that. Now this is where we have to be a little strategic. Maybe those identities that we talked about in the last section can help us rewrite some of these expressions. So hopefully there's a little light bulb going off in your head whenever you see either one of these numerators because there was a special identity from last section that dealt with sine squared and cosine squared. And that was sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Now what we can do is manipulate this by subtracting over either sine squared or cosine squared, and we can kind of turn that into either one of these expressions. So for instance, if I wanted to um, subtract cosine squared over, we'd have sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. And here's where we can use a substitution. Notice how sine squared is exactly the same, aka equal to one minus cosine squared. So instead of having sine squared in this numerator, we can go ahead and make that substitution because after all, they are exactly the same in terms of that identity. So with that substitution using the identity, we have just proven that the left side and the right hand side are gonna be exactly the same for any single radian value that you wanna choose. So like I said before, it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error. You just have to keep working with these. If you somehow stumble upon a roadblock where you're really not sure what to do, maybe just abandon ship and try something else again. Okay, it's just gonna be trial and error. And the more we do of these, you'll start to see some strategies um, that work out more often than not. So um, maybe we'll go ahead and go ahead and try on to, or move on rather to the next example. All right, so looking at our next one, let's use that strategy of turning everything into a sine or a cosine if possible. So looking on the left-hand side, I have a cotangent, which I can change into cosine over sine. Okay, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so we just have to flip that numerator and denominator. On the right-hand side, secant is one over cosine, and we're multiplying that by cosine. So let's see if we can simplify some of these fractions that are going on in here. Um, if you look at the denominator right here, notice how we have a sine being multiplied by a sine that's also being divided. So these are exactly the same. What we're gonna go ahead and try to do um, is you can think about turning this sine into a fraction over one, and maybe that'll make it a little bit more obvious that these signs are actually going to cancel. So on this side, we're left with cosine over cosine. On the right-hand side, kind of the same thing is going to happen because we have a cosine in the bottom being multiplied by a cosine up top, so we're left with 1 over 1. Now, hopefully it's obvious at this point, but just to show, okay, prove, because we have to show how the left and the right are exactly the same, anything divided by itself is 1, and we have that same concept happening here on the right. So notice how we just showed that whatever's on the left and the right are going to be exactly the same. Now, what's going on here? This is actually telling us that no matter what angle uh, radian value you want to plug in for those thetas, you're actually only ever going to get one as your answer. Okay, that's a little bit different. So it doesn't matter what angle you're going to get in or plug in rather, you're always going to get out one, which is kind of interesting.